Hello and welcome to The Love Talk, where we confront myths and misinformation when it comes to relationships. Where couples and singles learn to love intelligently. And today we want to talk about the latter, the singles. Mm -hmm. That's right. Today it's all about singles. singles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, to, in today's world, we know that uh, being single is not an easy task, right? No. Here in the UK, we have the statistics showing us that it's about 70%, 70 of, the of, the population. of the population who are still single. Uh, people have been to relationships before and now they find themselves alone. Others were still alone. And that's why we want to focus today's program on you, singles. That's right. A whole show about singles. But as the title of today's program uh, is single but not for long, we want to somehow you know, encourage you to think like, likewise, you know, single, but not for long. Yeah, when you learn intelligent love, you understand that you might be single right now, but that's not going to be for very long because intelligent love will guide you <laughs> yeah. to the relationship that you've been waiting all your life. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we, we hosted a very nice event, a night by the well, uh, which was hosted by us and the Love Talk show where we gathered uh, singles from all over London, outside London, as far as Leeds, Birmingham, Manchester, you name it, right? It was a very special night for singles. And we have some very special highlights also to share with you right now. Let's take a look. This event is hosted by the Love Talk. Uh, we usually hold uh, weekly seminars where we teach singles and couples how to love intelligently. So this event is a way for them to bring to practice. It's one way for them to bring to practice everything that we teach them every week. The purpose of the event is to promote uh, among singles, um, you know, an opportunity for them to talk get to know each other. They come from different parts of London, where we have our branches, where they attend our seminars. You know, some of them don't like the idea of going out, clubbing, partying, things like that. They have a different mindset. So what they want is a different environment. So we're trying to promote that environment for them to get to know each other. So we have live music, we have um, drinks, we have canapes, we have, you know, games. We created some lounges to so that they could have that different atmosphere and chill out, have a good time, talk. They don't necessarily need to leave here with someone, to walk away from here with someone holding hands. But at least it's, it's a way for them to socialize with people of the same faith, of the same beliefs, and same, same views. It's a comfortable environment, you know, where if they don't know each other, at least they know that the people here want the same things, which is what usually they don't get outside. Maybe you want something for your life, you have views, you have certain values, and you don't know if people out there have the same. So here, that's one good thing about the event that we are hosting. Everybody have the same values, the same, they look forward to the same things, and it's not, uh, there's no pressure. So I think that's, that's what they have to look forward to. They can just have a good time, socialize, get to know people without any pressure. One of the things we have, we encourage them to do is to be themselves. Not to pretend to be somebody else to impress because that's what sometimes the world is all about. Impressing. Sometimes people go to, to the extent of not being themselves just to attract attention. Here we, we encourage them, be yourself. Dress to impress, but don't try to impress with your words. When you open your mouth to speak to someone, just be yourself. Well, that was indeed a very special night. Nice vibes on that yeah. night. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. 
<laughs> we, ha we, we got some very good feedback from those who attended the, the event. He, as you could see, we, we tried to create different environments, right? Create some sort of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Ambiance. Yes, for <laughs> single men and women, so they could, you know, somehow, you know, put into practice the intelligent love that, that we speak so much about mm -hmm. here, you know, and in our seminar. So we wanted them to, you know, have the experience to do that. And, and not only, uh, we're not trying to push anyone that night to, to literally leave the premises, leave the, the venue, holding hands with somebody else. But we wanted them to at least practice the, the, those social skills, which in today's world somehow ha has been lost. Yeah, people Because are... they have been lost because people are all about internet, mm -hmm. Facebook, WhatsApp. There's nothing wrong with that, but we, we want people to go back to those principles where you, you meet someone face to face, you spend time together, you, you talk, you, 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 you only know who the other person is mm -hmm. by looking to that person's eyes. Yeah, it was a nice opportunity to exercise. Sometimes because you're not in a situation for so very long, it is hard for you to just go mm -hmm. out there and approach people, you yeah. know? And since everybody there was doing the same thing, was singles night, everybody was feeling quite encouraged yeah, to talk. You know, <laughs> and after a while, you, you become like a muscle, which is stiff. Yeah. And then when, you, when the, the, the opportunity comes, you know, you miss on, the, on that opportunity. So we even told them in the beginning, listen, you know, just be yourself. Don't worry about, you know, finding someone. As long as you, you have a good time, you'll be able to, you know, to draw some lessons from today's event. So it was a, it was a very good event. Now, after the break, we're going to have a panel here of singles. That's right. Uh, uh, some guys and, and young ladies who will be sharing with us their thoughts. Many of them were there uh, at the event, A Night by the Well, and they will be able to share with us their experience. After the break, stay with us. I think it's great. It's a good. It's a nice night because there's a lot of things going on. You find a lot of people conversating because there's um, loads of games, loads of rooms for people to go into to sit down. The mood is right. Uh, lots of refreshments. Um, we're helping actually um, at this night because um, it's we're, we're playing games that help people to speak a little bit more that wouldn't speak to each other. Yeah. Um, yeah it's just I think I'm finding it. Good. Yeah. I personally am really passionate about these kind of events just because um, when I was single I found them really really helpful so sometimes especially us women we find it really hard to come out of our comfort zone and to go up and speak to somebody but these events help facilitate you speaking to people that you would have never met people you may have never seen people that you may share interests with but you would never have known and, you know, they put in the hard work for you, so I think it's really, really helpful. I think it's pretty interesting as well, because I was speaking to a few of the guys that we were doing the games with, and they were saying to me, even though you may not meet someone that you may match with you, you can find someone that may match with someone that you do know. Right. So it's quite good and quite helpful, because obviously, the more you talk, the more you get to know each other. It's kind of like with us before, we had a perception of each other until we started to talk and then when we started to talk we started to learn a little bit more about each other and then we grew closer and then now today we're married. Exactly and it's so true because sometimes you like like my husband said I had this perception of him he had a perception of me and you're playing these games and you think it's like just speed dating or Jenga and it, it's a lot of fun and it is fun it's great it helps people loosen up but what you don't realise is that you're actually getting to know people. You're looking beneath the surface and a lot of the time you make a judgement on someone just by what you see and you can discard that person. And I always think about, my goodness, if I didn't get to know him, I could have discarded him. And you could have discarded me, that would have been terrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, it's great because I think when you're most comfortable is when you're playing a game or you're, you know, you're watching a TV series or having fun and then you're able to open up a little bit more. I think it's a bit more tense when you have to go and sit down in front of someone and speak. Yeah. Um, rather, when you're playing a little bit of a game, you, you, you relax, you relax and you get to know each other. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a great experience today. I'm happy to be one of the helpers. Yeah. And it's saw a lot of conversation today. Yeah, and hopefully the couples that we've seen speaking, it will lead to something great, which will be wonderful. <laughs> Hello.
Hello, our YouTube viewers. We are the presenters of the Love Talk Show. I am Rafa. And you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Look. And we are here to um, encourage you to share the, the, this, this channel um, with uh, your friends, your family members. Invite them to watch our, our shows because, you know, our desire is to help couples and singles do better in their relationships or future relationships. So um, subscribe to this channel, share on your Facebook page, share the link with, with everyone you know so that it can learn intelligent love. Also, leave us our comments and your questions. My name is Annabelle and I come from Kilburn Branch and I found the Night by the Well. Uh, it was very interesting for me because I've never been to an event like this before and as a young person I've never really like experienced like relationships or anything like that so it was definitely like a very new experience for me and it also like, allowed me to learn something about myself as well um, like how I kind of react in these kind of situations and you know, what kind of person am I to like approach other people and things like this. So it was, I really enjoyed the event and I would highly recommend anyone that um, would be interested in something like this where they could learn um, about like things in their love life and everything. So I'd definitely recommend it to other people as well. I think what I really enjoyed about the event that it was a very comfortable atmosphere. Um, to begin with, was, I found obviously for myself, I, was, I felt a bit awkward. But as like time went on, I realized it was actually a very comfortable like environment to be in, and to be in a place where other people are having the same goals as you, and you know they're having the same kind of mindset. I think that really helped to kind of make it easier to speak to people, and you know like and to just in generally enjoy myself. I think that people should come to the Love Talk Live seminars because. I believe that there's something different about the way that they do it. It's not like something where they kind of beat around the bush, but they really actually go into depth and they just kind of hit home to where it needs to be. Because at the end of the day, your your life isn't going to be successful if you don't like face the truth, if you don't face like the problems that are happening. And because even like the way that we learn things sometimes, we think that other people need to change and not us. But in fact, like what makes things more successful, what makes things work is when you change yourself. And I believe that's something that's quite different about how they do the seminars here in comparison to maybe other events that people do. So one of the purposes of the event was to put an end to awkwardness, as it she did? said, right? Yeah. So we created this event, we came up with the idea so people would not just find someone, but you know, somehow loosen up a little bit. Yeah, because when you know that everybody's there with the same purpose, everybody is probably feeling awkward, everybody's embarrassed, you feel a little, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, a little yeah. bit more comfortable. So I'm glad that Annabelle, one of the attendees, got to feel comfortable in our event. Yes, that's right. And as we promised you, we have here today with us a lovely panel mm -hmm. and in which some of them were present at the event uh, a night by the well, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have here Chica, right? <laughs> Hafsiba, <Hi>. good. <laughs> Charlene, Kyle, and Abraham. Hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a good memory. <laughs> so, how are you doing, guys? Good. You all right? Good. Yes? Yeah. Good. Were you there? Yes. Chica? Yes? <laughs> good, good. But we're going to talk about that in, a few, uh, in the, prom the next segment. What I would like to hear from you guys, and perhaps we could start with you, Chica, before we, we get into the event itself and what you guys have been learning about intelligent love, is a little bit of your relationship history, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I need to get into much details, but briefly tell us a little bit more, a little bit in depth, how, you know, you used to go about dating, or I don't know if any of you have been married before, how many relationships and things like that. So. Can we start with you, Chicken? Uh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so with me, starting from the background, I grew up in a quite a strict household. Mm -hmm. So dating was always sort of like, no, you don't need that right now. Concentrate on something else. So my mindset about dating sort of was sort of put on hold. So as I got into my late teens, when I did start dating, I was a bit 
unsure of myself. I was like, mm. okay, I'm dating, what do I do in this relationship? And when I did enter into basically the only serious relationship I did have, it was quite awkward for me. I, I kept doubting myself. I had a few insecurities. I was unsure. I was like, is this, is this flirting? Is this not? Is this acceptable? <laughs> is this? It was quite, it was quite strange. And then there was like a, a barrier of trust as well. I, di I didn't know how to trust. And then eventually it broke down. It's, it's so interesting what you're saying because many people, you see, they get ready for so many things in life, right? Mm -hmm. Career, uh, when it comes to school, your family, you know, very strict. You have to study and there's no time. But perhaps no one spoke to you about relationships. Yeah. So and when the time came for you to go about it, mm -hmm. you're complete, you know, lost. A little bit lost, yeah. yeah. Exactly that, exactly mm -hmm. that. And you have like friends and things and you try to watch other people, but then it gets so mm -hmm. confusing. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Abraham? Well, um, where do I start? So with me, um, at the beginning, because I was in secondary school, so I was like, you know what, let me just keep things calm, you know, let me just finish <laughs> secondary, secondary school so that when I go to college, and I can do whatever I want. Wow. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Literally, that was my mentality. That mm -hmm. was my mindset, just to go wild. Mm -hmm. So um, secondary school, everything was calm. When I got to college, that's when things, you know, just went off the hook. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't sort of go wild as in wild, but because of sort of um, trying to find relationships and so on and so forth, it affected me in my education and so on and so forth. So um, things began to really go like downhill for me. Mm -hmm. And I had to wake up. but that it's like it, it wasn't happening mm -hmm. so it's like I'll find out that one girl likes me and I'll be like okay yeah no problem I like that girl and then like a day or two later I'll be like no I don't like you anymore <laughs> and then that will bring like a big grudges of mm -hmm. like girls having grudges against me and I'll find out like you know I'll, I'll say to a certain girl you know I like you this and that and then we do one of mess around but you're then, pretty much very unstable <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much uh -huh. pretty much and that that, that was how it was uh -huh. But then it got to a point where I was like, you know, enough. So mm -hmm. there, was, there was a point where I just had to stop. Uh -huh. So when it comes to relationship, I haven't really had like a committed relationship mm -hmm. before. It was mm -hmm. just like one week or two weeks or whatever, whatever. Okay. And that was it. His system didn't work very well. No, like, I'm going to hold on. And off. then when I go to college, to let college, everything loose. It didn't but work. It work. <laughs> Hi, how are you, Hafsima? I'm well, thanks. Good. What about you? So uh, when I was at school, it was all about having a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So I'd have boyfriends and then, but I wasn't mature enough to have boyfriends. So I did things that was not what my mother wanted me to do anyway. So I had my first boyfriend and I was all excited. And then before I knew it, I was pregnant. So then I was a quick marriage mm -hmm. when I was married to him. And, uh, and so this is where things didn't go so well because I was only a teenager, I was an adolescent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand what was expected of me. I wasn't, as you said, I wasn't taught or trained, go to college, get your education, but relationships, mm -hmm. I wasn't told about. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes it's, it's not even the fault of the parents mm -hmm. because even themselves didn't have that before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can't put the blame on them 100% because, you know, only God knows what they, they experienced in the past. So perhaps- They want what's best, yes. their intention so, is good. And unfortunately, that's what happens nowadays. They focus too much on studies and career, making money. Mm -hmm. You have to have a good job and so on and so forth. But when it comes to relationships, it, it's a total disaster, right? Mm -hmm. Kyle, how about you? Uh, he's got one. <laughs> Well, um, funny thing is, I've actually never been in a relationship as such. Mm -hmm. The reason being is that with my family, I was raised up in quite a open family, so mm -hmm. they just let me do whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. But because I always saw these bad references with my mum, with my dad, I saw just the brokenness there. I saw separation and division across all of them, not just my mum and dad per se, but the rest of my family as mm -hmm. well. And I saw the consequences of what happened between them two, and I didn't want that for myself. So instead of branching out to get into relationships with other people, mm -hmm. I really closed up and I kept myself to myself. Mm -hmm. I did want to get in a relationship and everything, but it was just a matter of, I was too afraid to take that step because I didn't So what you saw, what you witnessed, put you off a little bit. Yeah, it really put me right? off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to the point where I was, 
it was really difficult for me to trust someone mm -hmm. as such. So, so you never became you never became the kind of person who who is against marriage. No, but there was a, a little bit of fear and then yeah. anxiety, not it, knowing what what it was could be with you. Yeah, it uh -huh. was kind of like it was it was for them if they managed to get it done for them, that's good. But for me, it was like I don't know if it's going to be for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> understand clearly. Yeah. How about you, Charlene? Yeah, well, I had very bad, actually, yeah, references from my parents as well. Mm -hmm. So they never talked with me about relationship at all. So, and also my mother, she was always kind of cold to me. Mm -hmm. So I got into a relationship when I was 16, and I've been with my boyfriend in that time for four years, but just with the wrong intention. I was just looking for love, that somebody would love me, but I was not, actually, I didn't know what the relationship was about and I moved in with that guy already before mm. I actually been in a relationship with him. So to cut you, were you trying to find in him what you didn't get from your parents? Well, in that time I didn't know that, but nowadays you I think that. Uh -huh. that was actually my intention, but mm -hmm. obviously it was not the right one. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I moved to London, I got into another relationship here and that was actually the complete disaster. Mm -hmm. So because I still had that same intention um, and then I ended up in a very violent mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. and yeah, but Good. <laughs> So uh, we, we have here a, a variety of, of stories yeah. Which is very good for us to illustrate to you who are watching us right now Why we have such events as the night by the well mm -hmm. Why we promote such events because we want people to get out of this kind of relationships and, and situations and learn the intelligent love learn something that they never learned you know, throughout their lives, you know. Um, we're going to continue with the panel after after the break because we're going to explore some other other, of, uh, other other subjects here. We'd like you to stay with us. Don't go anywhere because we have two more segments with our panel here and it's looking very interesting, <laughs> okay? Stay with us. Do you know what intelligent love is? Uh, but you can find out on our site. It's lovetalkshow.tv. Many people, they struggle in love, in their relationships. They keep losing their hearts, their feelings, and everything always goes to waste. So if you want to learn to love intelligently, that's the place you should visit, lovetalkshow.tv. We also have our Facebook page, our Instagram page, Love Talk Show. So visit us. I just agree with everything she said. One of the things I would like to say to you tonight, very simple, very short, which is to not put a lot of pressure on yourself because you're not meant to be here under a burden thinking that, you know, something must happen tonight. I know many of you came here with that faith. And I think you should keep that faith. However, see this is an investment. This is what we've been teaching you from the beginning of the year as you've been coming to the seminars. Invest in yourself. Many of you here, you have been attending the seminars. Actually, many of you, you, you came every single month for all the seven steps to rebuild yourself. So I believe that you've learned a lot. Have a good time. Invest. Be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to impress. Because nobody wants to know someone else. Uh, oh, pardon me. No one wants to find out later on that that someone else is somebody else. Are you with me? Yes. Some people, they are too eager to find someone when they forget to find themselves. And when, and when, and when the, the time for a relationship comes, they're completely lost. So, be yourself tonight. Talk to people. Don't be primitive. Because everybody is in the world. You look awesome. You look very well dressed. You came dressed to impress. But then nobody's impressed just with your outfit. You want to be impressed with the words that come out of your mouth. Obviously, 
Remember, be yourself. Don't try to impress, especially the man. Try to impress. No, no, no. Just be yourself. I only have one thing that I have to say to the women who come to me to counsel. We sometimes, like we said, have an idea of what we want. And when we are approached by somebody, it might be that your reaction was not what I thought. You're not attracted at first. This is another wrong idea that the world brings to us. Love at first sight. You look at once it's like, yes, that's, that, that person's the one. Maybe you look at the person once, you're not attracted to them, but once you get to know them, that person is everything that you wanted, that you needed. So give yourself a chance. Sometimes you say, I'm gonna give that person a chance. No, give yourself a chance and talk. Nowadays people text, they message, they don't do this. And also, another thing that I see many people fear is, this, oh, what if someone is interested in me? How can I say no? If I'm not into after, you know, we talk to them, no, it's no. People are afraid of that. You shouldn't be. This is a good exercise for you. So if you talk to somebody tonight and at the end you realize, no, it's not going to work, don't want to talk any further, then you have to be comfortable to say no. Hello and welcome back to The Love Talk and today's topic is single but not for long. Indeed. So today it's all about singles, right? Yes, and we have, we are back with our panel and we showed you a little bit of, well, a little highlight of the Night by the Well event which was a singles night uh, hosted by us. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to ask you who were there, some of you were there in the event, what was your experience? Maybe Hefsba could go first. <laughs> this is my third event. Okay. And um, this was really special. Okay. I was excited about coming. And when I walked through the door, it was just, you know, it was just amazing. And I literally made it my purpose to go to every corner to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I just saw just a lot of engagement. And um, the activities were just so well done. and. It was well thought out. I was really pleased to be there and uh, the chocolate fountain. <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate fountain was The chocolate fountain was, fountain was the highlight. <laughs> it's the highlight, but you can only eat so much. It was just really <laughs> fabulous. Uh -huh. it's, it's funny that usually when people go to these events, when they want to meet somebody, they usually say, oh no, I don't eat. <laughs> yeah. But on the event, everybody yeah. was just queuing yeah. for, the, <laughs> for the chocolate fountain. That's it was correct. nice. <laughs> and your experience, Chica? Yeah, literally. Um, I, I turned up a bit afterwards and as soon as I walked in, my friend she was like there's two chocolate fountains <laughs> white chocolate and milk chocolate and we just went straight there that was it was really great but honestly for me what was great was the environment it was it was buzzing as soon as I walked in it was it was it was just beautiful and coming from I don't know being in like other events and thinking about like today with the types of apps for singles mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. these days the atmosphere was com completely different. There wasn't usually when you attend sort of like singles things, the intention is to get to know people, but there seems to be so a type of a... Tension. Like, yeah, tension. Mm -hmm. a, a tension mm -hmm. in, the, in the atmosphere, and it's just, it gets really horrible. So, but as soon as I walked in, there was none of that. It was, people were so genuine. There were nice people were talking and things like that. It was quite interesting. I heard a few people like getting into it, talking, mm -hmm. but then they'll go like, well, how old are you? And it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because the whole idea of the games and, yeah. you know, chocolate fountains was, was a way to get people to talk to yeah. each other, yes. right? Yeah. Break the ice a little yeah. bit. Yeah, they were great icebreakers. We had that special lounge where people were meeting. Did yeah. you get to get into that lounge this I time? I, I didn't, but a friend of mine was in there nearly for the whole night. Wow. So hopefully she's not Hope. single anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It was, it was really great. Even the 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 well the mm -hmm. the structure that really blew me away mm -hmm. like I didn't even take pictures of myself I was taking pictures of it <laughs> because it, it was really a, the experience when you walked in and it just the atmosphere made you want to just like say hi hi mm -hmm. hi hello mm -hmm. and yeah. talk to people so it was really good good, good. we 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 have a question to the guys right yes <laughs> but before we ask you the question mm -hmm. we're gonna watch a, a short clip of the event and we're gonna get back to you and we want your input 
on, on that comment of yeah. our, one of our hosts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. so let's have a look. Let's watch the, the video. And also, if you maybe you've seen someone that you say, okay, we'd like to have a conversation with you privately. We have the lounge area just by the entrance. So feel free to welcome. And if, this one is directed to the guys. Your wall, this wall is not your friend. Stay away from it. <laughs> So we wanna. <laughs> so do you have a friend uh, called Wall? Uh, yes, yeah. um, so when you heard that, well, was it true? Yeah. Um, in a way, yes, yeah, sort of. Um, it was true. Right. Um, even even during the night, um, I, I was rushing from I rushed from work to come, and I was like, as soon as I walked in, I was like, oh wow, I'm a little bit underdressed because I had like a shirt, and I thought, oh my goodness, why are people, you know what? Because I saw people in suits and stuff, and I was thinking, what look are you even going to think of me? <laughs> so then I, I was trying to hide, and then I was thinking, oh, this is going to be a long night. And you called Wall. <laughs> <laughs> you, gave, you gave your friend a call. <laughs> but literally, I, first of all, I went to the game area, and I started playing the games and stuff, mm -hmm. and I began to be a little bit more at ease and confident. I started speaking, and then freedom, everything just, literally, everything went so quick, because mm -hmm. I thought people were going to look at me and thinking, oh, look at this guy, how mm -hmm. can he come in like this? But literally, it was, it was so good. So, so you good. kept yourself away from the wall. I, 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 was, I was running <laughs> away from the wall. You mingled big time. <laughs> big time. <laughs> How about you, Kyle? Were you near the wall? Nowhere near the wall. I didn't even meet the wall. <laughs> <laughs> good. good. I literally walked in and I heard that and I started laughing. But then it did bring a thought to my mind. It, the reason why they go to the wall is because they're just afraid. They're like, it's, there's, the ice needs to be broken. Mm -hmm. And it's just awkward. So it's like, just chill at the wall, just wait for some of the guys to uh -huh. come by and speak to them uh -huh. and you can just ride it out like that. Uh -huh. But you have to get out of your comfort zone yeah. and the games really helped with that uh -huh. because at first I felt a bit awkward, I was suited and booted, but just felt a bit awkward. But then when I got into the games and everything, it was good. I got to speak to one person, then I spoke to another person and then it just went on from there and mm -hmm. it just flowed, mm -hmm. just flowed so naturally and it was just, mm -hmm. it was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually get to go everywhere because I, literally just speaking to people mm -hmm. and so I was a bit yeah. upset when it finished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this whole thing about the wall is real, isn't it, ladies? Yeah. yeah, it is real. What did you say on that? You've seen that before? I, I have seen that before because um, in, in one of the events before, like even the event just gone, there was a guy that I thought, oh, he'll be interested to talk to. But he, he stuck by the wall a lot he's and that sort of put me off. I was like, oh, maybe <laughs> he's, just, he's not brave enough. So uh -huh. maybe he might not want to talk, so I sort of just left it. So here's a hint to those who are watching us now, especially the single guys, stay away from the wall. The wall is not, not your, your friend. friend. <laughs> so you have to make things happen, right? Yeah. And you see, the, uh, the, the whole event was created around that idea to help people be themselves. Mm. Not trying to impress people with words and etc. Even though we told them dress to impress, just the dressing. Not the speech, mm -hmm. right? So you have to be yourself. We encourage them to be themselves, you know, and, and talk, you know, you know, strike a conversation, you know, be yourself. Because when, as Chico was saying, when there is that tension, you start thinking that, I know I have to impress this girl, I have to impress this guy, what am I going to say? Let me think about something here. That's when you're no longer yourself. Mm. Yeah. You're no longer yourself. Is that right? Yeah. That's true. So y you have to just be yourself yeah. and, and yeah. talk. Whether we are talking here and then someone you you know kind of start flirting and seeing that this can go somewhere yeah. or not, okay, that's that's fine. If it doesn't yeah. happen, good. At least you made friends. You mm. you learn how to speak and and you know socialize, <laughs> which yeah. it's a skill many people are losing nowadays, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? Because because they are always on their phone, tablets, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what the event promoted big time. Yeah, because I think. Lots of people, when they go to events like this, oh, they go out to meet somebody. They have that pressure that, okay, uh, yeah, 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 let's, let's date. So I go out of here with someone when sometimes not even talk. They, they don't even have that skill. Mm -hmm. And this is what I like about the event we hosted, that you, you were there to exercise, you know, to... Yeah. to, to Hands-on. Yeah, yeah, you could talk and Literally. feel free to talk without any pressure to have to get out with someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think 
people shouldn't rush. Maybe you're single and you're like, I have to have somebody. If I go to a place or an event, I have to find someone. You're rushing too much. Just get comfortable, get to know people, Ask talk questions. to people. Yeah, yes. and it's gonna happen. It's gonna flow, like Kyle yeah. said. It's gonna flow. Dig deep, <laughs> dig deep, don't be afraid. So then we're gonna go for a short break right now and after the break, we'll be back with the panel for our final conclusions. Stay with us. My name is Omar Reed. Um, I'm from Wood Green. And I found the Night by the Well um, actually very interesting. It's the first time I've come to um, uh, an event like this. And I've been um, attending for several years. But I always had that preconception that these kind of events would be very awkward, would be very... Um, I just would make every excuse in my mind not to come. Um, but I came and it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, and it actually helped me um, realize that I'm a lot more outgoing than I thought I was. Um, so yeah, it was very, very good. I, I liked that the different, um, the tables downstairs, they each were different, but each of them tackled uh, like a social skill that would help you um, later on in your love life. For instance, one tackled um, communication, um, another one tackled, um, you know, being able to speak to someone and compliment them based on what you see. Um, so it was very, very, um, it was very good. It, like, it taught you how to communicate with someone. So I like that. I spoke to a few people. Um, some of them were very interesting. Um, I was placed uh, on tables with people that were a lot older than me, so that definitely did not work. Um, but yeah, the people I spoke to, they were, they were very nice. What I'm looking for in my future partner is someone who is very grounded, um, someone who is confident within themselves, someone who's very assured of who they are and um, is not afraid to show that someone who um, loves themselves unconditionally which will enable me to love them um, and yeah someone that is very real someone that is down to earth someone that likes to have fun um, but they also know how to play you know they they work hard and play hard also i think that people should definitely come to events hosted by um, love talk um, and the love talk team because i think people in these events you learn how to open up in these events, you learn how to um, overcome whatever social barriers that you may have, you learn how to overcome you know, the, the conflicts that you have in your love life, um, may, whether it happened in past relationships, whether it's you know, insecurities that people may have and with these events they teach you how to you know, not only overcome those but you know, how you can open yourself up and allow yourself to love again. Hello everyone, we are here to invite you to our Love Talk seminars every Thursday at 8 p.m. on the address that you can see here at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can also find more details on our website, lovetalkshow.tv. Um, we, you find events throughout the year, they are all free, um, you, where you're going to learn a lot about relationships, um, you know, singles and couples are invited. Our, our desire is to share with you a little bit of what we've been through and also, you know, help you uh, with prayers, with advice, with counseling, uh, down-to-earth teachings in which will help you become a better man, a better woman, a better husband, a better wife, and see, you know, better, better results of your uh, investment when it comes to uh, relationships okay every Thursday 8 p.m. love talk live on this address here that you see at the bottom of your screen so my name is Anna uh, and I'm from Leeds and this is my first time of uh, attending the event and I felt that it was really not what I expected but it's so much better so it was really just an opportunity to see how these events go and I really had a lot of fun and I just really wasn't expecting anything but I just was so excited to come and I'm so glad that I came basically yeah well my name is Teresa I'm from Leeds too and I really find the event amazing was every the environment the people the beginning the reception was everything very good a great opportunity and I can say that I'm coming out of this event more confident you know more 
self esteem yeah everything okay to yeah to to go to the next step so the best part of the night for me was the live music it was just like stunning i just i love live music so for me it was like yes and we were like literally the only people like clapping for like five minutes it was just like yeah it's amazing <laughs> So my favorite part of the event uh, was the night, the um, live music. I really love the live music, and I love the, the beginning when uh, when Luke was talking about the the beginning of the the night of well, how we're gonna go, the opportunity that we're gonna have. So the reception for me was very good because there my my eyes were like my mind was open, and I was like, okay, this is gonna be a good a good night, a good evening here. And it was very good to, to, to see people talking to each other, even though I didn't have the opportunity to speak with anyone because I was just you know, looking, uh, yeah. Seeing other people talking to a to different person was very good too. I do part of the Love Talk seminars in Leeds. We have the, 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 um, how was it? the conference too there. And I can say the Love Talk is, is part of my life now because before the Love Talk, I was so emotional. I had a lot of complex traumas inside of me and with the love talk I had the opportunity just to open myself and to start taking care of my of my insides and now this is a reflection of my outside and even though before I didn't believe in myself I think why should this person look at me why should this person you know like want to know me what do I have special I was like that before but after doing part of the love talk seminar you know it being every Thursday doing everything that we are learned to do I'm a different person now yeah and I can say I'm ready for a relationship and the love talk is definitely changed my, my mind of yeah what is a relationship so yeah uh, with myself I do attend the love talk seminars I think well a few different people like recommended it to me and I was always like no no I don't care about my love life I'm just fed up I've had so many negativity out of it I don't care Someone really forced me to come <laughs> and I'm really glad that they did because I didn't realise that going in a relationship means that it doesn't necessarily mean oh you, you know yet tomorrow you're going to be in a relationship you know what the, I've learnt from the seminars is that I actually need to work on myself and oh boy I really need to work on myself because I didn't know anything I literally didn't know anything everything that I have in terms of relationships before attending the service was just negative and bad whereas now I'm starting to learn that you know I need to change I need to change the, my perception and and also change um, you know what I see in, in, in a relationship because before it was just like oh you know what's the point I'm just gonna fight all the time save myself a headache <laughs> whereas now I'm like actually positive and positive and actually open-minded to even attend this event it was actually quite a big thing for me as well um, so yeah I'm, I've definitely learned a lot and I just can't wait to go back next Thursday so can we go there now <laughs> <laughs>but I understood that that is not how a relationship should work. So I'm still like trying to adapt myself to the new thing that actually the man makes the, the final mm -hmm. decision of uh, my decision which mm -hmm. have to be taken. But I mean, it's not easy, but I'm getting there. It's baby steps. And it's yeah. it's baby steps, <laughs> but... And obviously you, you have the, the, the example of your parents and you, you didn't see a very good outcome 
So that goes to show that that doesn't work. That's not the way to go, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and obviously, we are not saying that women should behave like, like this rug here or accept anything like doormats. No, not that. But, you know, it's all about understanding uh, the roles of men and women, husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Nobody's better than the other. Uh, none of them are superior you know, than the other. It's just knowing each one's place, yeah. right? I know I'm just preparing myself for that and I find Good. it actually quite exciting. Good, that's excellent. Wonderful. <laughs> Let's hear from Hafsima. I can agree with Charlene. Um, the reference that I had in my parents, my mother was a strong woman as well. Mm. And I totally did the same thing when I was married. I just ordered and was cheeky. You know, I wouldn't take no. I wanted it my way. Mm -hmm. You were the boss. I was the boss. <laughs> I was so and what the boss. did the boss get? Yeah. So the boss got in a lot of arguments. <laughs> it wasn't a happy, you know, the result wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted it my way, but the result that was thrown back at me wasn't what I wanted. I, you know, as you're saying, I think it, this is so common because it seems like us women, if we don't force our way, we can't get our way, and it's wrong. Mm. This is why you have to, many women have to make sure that I'm heard and people do and my partner does as I want because if I don't push it down his throat, he's not going to do it. But there are ways. Yeah. There are ways, there are other ways to go about it that actually work. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to, yeah. to force it. For real, and I've, I, I can see that now. Mm. There's certainly ways, and I realize that you, you can get whatever you want as a woman when you do it the right way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay. yes, I, I, I vouch for that. <laughs> it works a great deal. It yes, it's taken a long time yeah. to realize this, uh -huh. though. <laughs> uh, for me, it was. Uh, to, to look inside myself and to, to accept who I was and my standards and understand that that's okay. Because mm -hmm. when from the Intelligent Love Seminars, we were taught that to have standards, to have values. And I, I've always believed I've been a, a strong kind of person and I've always had that. But the thing is, um, in the big wide world, there's the mainstream, the mainstream mm -hmm. what everybody, the majority accepts, and then certain things seem to be the minority. So a lot of my um, choices or my decisions within a relationship seem to be in the minority. And then I would start to doubt myself and I'd be like, oh, it's not working out because I have these standards, mm -hmm. I should join in with the mainstream and mm -hmm. be like everyone else and um, have those standards. But from the, the Intelligent Love Seminars, I really learned to hold fast on and be proud of those mm -hmm. and be proud of my decisions and not think, oh, I don't have a relationship because I have these standards. No, I will have a better relationship because I have these standards. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Good. And, and it's, it's really helped me. It was really, it was really changing because it was a big shift from a negative view to something so positive. And, and I really believe the outcome will be good. <laughs> High five. <laughs> I like that. Good. How about you guys? Um, well, for me, um, I, I actually started the seminars like sort of halfway. But from everything that I've been learning, what really stood up for me, how to love intelligently was um, the vision. And it's not just about sort of getting into a relationship to say, do you know what, I'm actually dating or actually found someone to date, but it's actually knowing what you want out of that relationship. And that really makes a big difference because it's like before you go into it, you analyze everything to make sure that it's not just for the short term, but it's for the long term. And that really opened my eyes because um, I didn't really sort of have um, like a vision for the relationship. I mean, that's why even I was a bit hesitant in coming to and go into the um, love intelligence seminars because of the because of the lack of vision. But the moment I started going, I actually realised that you know what, this is so beneficial. Mm -hmm. Why well, didn't actually come before? <laughs> and it's been helping me so much, so much. Mm -hmm. And now it's like I'm not in a relationship now, but it's sort of preparing me so that mm -hmm. when it's time to get into mm -hmm. a relationship, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, I have I'm, to like, learn. I have a question for all of you in a few minutes. I'm going to ask you know, <laughs> about that. Okay, not being in a relationship right now. Yeah. Okay, let's hear from Kyle. 
Okay, so what I learned about intelligent love, it actually ties in with my past. Um, I said before that I was really close and I didn't want to really trust people. And the thing is, when you don't trust people like that, it's you put high standards up because you don't want to get hurt or anything. So it's like a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. What I learned was that no one's perfect. No one's going to be like that straight, 10 out of 10 straight away. Relationships in your love life is literally like wine. It gets better with time. Mm -hmm. So literally, they may have some flaws here and there, but I have flaws as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect myself. Mm -hmm. And so it's a matter of finding someone who's going to be compatible with me in a way so that I can build them and they can build me so that we can become better. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really learned from it. Well, high five I'll, to all of yes, you. Yes, I went deep there. Yeah, yeah. he went deep, deep, yeah. deep, deep. deep. <laughs> so my question to you now is, is it really bad to be single right now? No, are you like, ah, oh, I'm single. You know, I'm, I'm dying here. Do you think that way? Huh? Honestly, um, if I say like right now, because there seems to be like a spate of engagements. Like I have mm -hmm. so many, I've had yeah. three weddings in three months mm -hmm. and I have two mm. engagements literally this month. So it's a bit like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> getting married. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, it's the positive shift. I see it as like, mm. Like I'm helping my friend plan her wedding and on the side I'm like planning mine. <laughs> it's like a good experience. I just see everything with a positive o o Obviously, you, you don't want to remain single, obviously. No. That's why we're saying single, but not for long. Not for yeah. long. But you know, sometimes when people are single, they get desperate, anxious, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you know, they end up doing things that later they, they, they regret later on, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel that way right now? That you're desperate, you're anxious, you need someone, or you are like, on a hunt, per not se? Not on a hunt, <laughs> definitely not on a hunt. But I realize that it's a good place to be because I can observe and I can watch my own actions when I see Mr. Potential. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just enjoy this journey because I know it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. And my standards, are, I don't have to lower my standards. Mm -hmm. So I'm enjoying where I am right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking forward to that. That's it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, for me, it's actually... I'm actually enjoying it right now to be single because since I'm 16, I've always been in a relationship. So I never really had the opportunity to get to know myself. So now I'm actually on that journey with myself and I'm actually, mm -hmm. I like it. I'm, I mean, I don't want to be single forever, obviously, course, yeah. but I like it. Yeah. But how, how, can you, how can you be well with somebody else or be happy with somebody else if you're not happy with yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. So guys, we'd like to thank you very, thank you very much. Okay. And actually, I'd like to propose a deal here because since yeah. they came to the panel single, they will have to come back when they are Ooh. in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> back here. Yeah, definitely with your partner. Yes. Right. <laughs> so thank you very much for your for your time. We appreciate and we really love your feedback. Yeah. Very nice. We hope those who are watching us, they are learning something uh, with you today. Okay. Yeah. So this is intelligent love yeah. that we, 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 we so much advocate here in our, in our shows. Um, being well with yourself, being you know, complete on your own. Some of them were, were very clear here, very adamant. I was very busy with many relationships, going from one relationship to another, but not thinking about myself, mm -hmm. not working on myself. And the outcome of those relationships, they were not very positive. Yeah, right? and sometimes, even though they are in relationships, they don't work because they just go, they rush from one to another. I think it's like this, even if you're single right now, it's better to be single right now so that the next relationship is the one than to just be jumping and mm -hmm. never getting it right. Yeah. So, uh, single but not for long. Not for long. <laughs> so if you'd like more information, you can go to our website, lovetalkshow.tv. You have uh, access to our YouTube channel, Instagram page, uh, account, Facebook page, and all sorts of information for singles and couples. And about intelligent love. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for watching us. Uh, we'd like to thank also our makeup artist, uh, Kate, Kate Aime. Aime. Thank you, Katie, very much. <laughs> She's looking lovely. Okay. See you next time, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. And that's all for today's Love Talk show. Be sure to tune in next week to learn more on how to love intelligently. <laughs>